Oh, well. <laughs> cool. I just wanted to see everybody. It's so nice to see you. Hey. Hello, Josh. Hello. Hello. Hi. It's so good to see everybody. Cool. Nice. Thank you, everybody, for coming to this cool event. I'm really honored. In fact, I can speak on behalf of the collective, being one of the co-founders of it. And we're really honored for all of you to be here for this event that um, um, is uh, based partially on, or is based around the you know, aspects of our collective. And also, I'm really honored by Adam's book. It's a really, really cool and interesting book um, in its own right. And uh, um, and, and, and it's, it, it's really special because like when we were like kids and we started Elephant Six, it was built into it that it was like an invitation. We knew like five other people like us. And we were like, we need to meet the other 10 or 20 people that are out there, the kids our age that are like recording on four tracks and they like the Beach Boys as well as punk rock. And like, uh, um, and, like it turned out that like it like worked. <laughs> And in any event, the fact is that it's an invitation, and, and, that, and, and Adam writing this book, and the book existing, it feels like that invitation, but in, it, as like a, it like gets transferred into into uh, the next generation in the future, and, and and in a way that our really obscure collective didn't like do on its own, and it like makes me feel really happy. So I'm really grateful for that, and very honored by it. And uh, in any event, thank you all very much for coming to this event tonight. I'm really sorry that I was late. Um, I was in the studio, and in fact, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute, because I'm going to invite a musical guest up, another musical guest. Um, in 1992, here in Athens, um, I was visiting my friend Will, who had just moved here after a failed attempt to move to the Virgin Islands. And like, um, and like um, we were talking about this idea that some of our friends and, and we had together of having kind of like a record label, but it was like we would just make cassettes on our cassette decks and like, um, and, and uh, um, I ended up taking out a credit card to, with a $500 credit limit and I spent it on, our, on the first Elephant 6 7 inch, the first Apple 7 inch, and like um, um, that was not a business venture so much as it was us just trying to make art. But in any event, Will, I was like, what would be a cool name? And he was like, Elephant Six. And I was like, where'd you come up with that? <laughs> so yes, that's the name. How about we call it the Elephant Six Recording Company? The, the conversation happened exactly in that lapse of time. <laughs> and, um, and, and he was like, yes, that's it. <laughs> and so in any event, and in 1993, when I guess we were both 22, we were both 22. We wrote a song called Pyramid Landing yeah, together, like at that on that trip. Yeah. And like uh, then, in like the next year, 1993, we put out the first Elephant Six catalog and started to release our first uh, cassettes and seven inches. And so it was really fun. And Will, um, on the night before I had to send off the label art for the first Apple seven inch, which was the first Elephant Six seven inch, um, we needed a logo, and he hadn't uh, he hadn't gotten the logo done yet that he was going to draw. And so like um, he went um, into this. Uh, he was living at the time in like. Um, we had an apartment, and the apartment had an extra, uh, like the boiler room for the whole building right outside of it. It wasn't technically part of the apartment, but Will lived there. <laughs> and, like, um, and so anyway, he like went out there, and the next morning he came in, and he like cooked out a piece of art he had fit up all night, and then put an Elephant Six logo on the table, and it was just like, oh my god, that's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It was, it was it. So we sent it off on time, and in any event, that same, like within days of that, I went to a tattoo shop, and I got the most painful experience of my life. <laughs> An Elephant Six tattoo when I was 21, and like uh, with Will's logo, and I'm still very proud of it. And at that time, I was like, man, one day it's gonna look like I'm a sailor, and I have this like blue tattoo, and I'm really old. But it only took till I was like 50, so <laughs> it's not that old, young people. <laughs> but, yeah, it comes it happens quickly. Yeah, and you don't feel as different. Yeah, I was 22, as you. now 50. That's right. You don't feel as different as you look. <laughs> when, you, when you're when you're when you're the same. Okay. Cool. Um, Will referenced a song called "Warm Milk and Chocolate" that we recorded together in our in our um, um what our mentors, our college age mentors, yeah. attic. <laughs> yeah, they have they have the attic recording machine. Yeah, a yeah, house. Uh, um, and so, like, uh, uh, why don't we play that, Will? I, okay. By, I think it came by semi um, implied request. From um, our friends on stage. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to take the lead book? Is, I hope this is the one you can take the lead book. Is this one Oh my gosh. There's a bunch right next to you on the floor. I see them, but do not engage them. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
Okay. The main thing about this song, the main thing about the song were two things. One, we had just learned Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix, and it has this chord in it. I did. I did. Yeah, you did. And the second thing is I had just learned major seventh chords, which go like this. And so um, that's all that the song is. <laughs> so you thought I was being really clever, but I just, I just learned those chords. <laughs> <laughs> Does we all need a mic? Yes, you need that mic. Can you bend it over towards you? Yeah. Is that cool? Are you doing the whole thing or do you need that? I'm doing the high. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so this song's called Warm Milk and Chocolate. It's just about my life at the age of 15. Okay. <laughs> to talk about it, I'm going to recognize Will. Will is well known as an incredibly great artist, songwriter, producer, experimental musician, um, and he's under-recognized for his skills as a great drummer. He's a really great natural yeah. drummer. He's played drums on many of my recordings, and I'm just saying, if you need a great natural drummer, Will's really good at it. I'm just putting it out there. Okay, cool. He plays drums on his own. Yeah, there's only one beat. Okay, here it goes. We're starting over? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, there's the Jimmy Hendrix chord and the major seventh chord, though. There's another major seventh chord that makes it good. It's his tricky. Yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, I don't think I ever told you the formula. But that's where it came from. <laughs> Um, 
Do we know other songs together? Probably not. Mm. Any Marvel stuff? Yeah, we do. I can't even play it. Do we play the uh, um, Will you play drums with me on the song? Sure. On the back of my guitar? Is that, oh wait, on the back of AJ's guitar and that guitar. Okay. But it's about mine. <laughs> but I am going to use that one. Okay. okay. Is it, I'm going to do Stream Language. You've played it with me before a lot of times. Okay. Apple song? Yeah. Is that cool? Yes. Yeah, it's like. Once it starts, okay? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. This is us. This song's called Stream Running Over. It was on the third Apple's in stereo album, or maybe it's the fourth one. Okay. Yeah. It's never quite clear, actually, because we had an album that was almost an album that was the third one, or maybe it was not one. Okay, here goes.